What's going on everyone? You're back with your boy Jono for another quick math lesson. Today we're going to have a look at the topic of radial surveys, which is something that's always going to pop up in a year 12 HSC. These are questions that really freak out a lot of my students. They look quite hard, there's a lot of information, there's a big diagram, but it's really quite simple once we get the hang of it. So the best thing for us is that radial surveys are a combination of two major skills that we've had heaps of practice with. The first one is we do need to know our compass bearings. And once you're on top of that, you're actually halfway to solving any of these questions. The second thing we have to do, once we've worked out what our degrees are gonna be for the question, if we can apply and use the sine or cosine rule, making sure we're picking the correct one, we're gonna get these all correct. Sometimes you might get an area of a triangle question at the very end, but this is less common than the sine and cosine, and that's what we're gonna focus on in today's lesson. So really, you just have to think about these, not like radial surveys, right? These get a little bit scary, but these are just worded trig problems. But you're gonna to have to draw the diagram from someone else's diagram first. If you can do that, we've been doing it since year nine, I think you're gonna be all right. So in order to do this, we're gonna have a look at some past HSC questions, just to make sure that we know what we're looking for in the questions and in the diagrams. So for this first example, this survey or the diagram that I'm going to show you was actually in the HSC, but the question was about a different triangle that was made. So what we're going to do is see that we can use these same principles no matter what the question is. So our goal for this next example is just we want to find out absolutely everything about the triangle BOC. So usually a question is going to ask you to find something specific, but if we can find everything, that's even better. So the first thing I do anytime I attack one of these questions. If there's multiple triangles that could be drawn, I would just highlight the triangle that I'm talking about straight away. So we're talking about the triangle BOC, and I'm gonna put that in immediately. The first thing you wanna do for these types of questions always is find the angle that's around the origin immediately. If you don't have this angle in there, you can't do any of the maths. So that's our first point of call every single time. So the question actually gives us all the information that we need straight away. We can see that line C is going off at 113 degrees from dead north and B is going off at an angle of 21 degrees. That means that 113 is that big one, 21 is that little small one that I've drawn in. So all I've got to do is do 113 minus 21, which gives me the answer of 92 degrees. Throw that into your diagram straight away and we've got that right. So now we've got two side lengths and an included angle. What you'll be asked to find next is that opposite side length or the side length BC. So for this, because we've got those informations or three side lengths and an angle, we can use the cosine rule really easily. So all we've got to do is X squared is equal to our two side lengths squared or 60 squared plus 48 squared minus 2AB cos C or two times 60 times 48 times cos 92. Throw that into your calculator, you're gonna get a big number right, that doesn't really fit in to our diagram. Just remember, you've always got to root your answer for these questions, and that's going to give an answer that fits in quite a lot better. So we got the answer of 78.13 meters. I would chuck that into your diagram straight away. And we actually know that this is definitely going to be correct. Because 92 has to be the biggest angle in this triangle, we know that that side length BC has to be the longest length. 78 is bigger than the 60 and 48, so we know we're on the right track. The last thing that we might be asked to do is to find an angle that's not the origin. So for this one, we might want to find the angle OCB or that one down the bottom. And that'll actually tell us what the other angle is as well, just by knowing that 180 minus the other two gives us that answer. So for this one, we could use the cosine rule again, but I'm going to use the sine rule just to show that it's possible to do it both ways. So sine of my angle goes with its opposite side and its opposite side is 60. So sine theta over 60 is equal to sine 92 and its opposite angle, which is 78.13 from the last question. Now we've got to get theta by itself. So I'm going to time 60 over to the other side. And then I've got to remember to do sine minus one or the inverse of sine to get rid of that in order to get theta by itself. I like to just skip to that sine minus one straight away and then type that into my calculator. It just saves a little bit of work. So all I've got to type into my calculator is sine minus one 60 multiplied by what was on the other side, which is side 92 over 78.13. Hit equals in your calculator and you get the answer of 50.13 degrees. Throw that in straight away. And now we've found all the angles and all the side lengths 
for this triangle. So even though it looked harder than a normal trig problem, really we're just finding out specific bits of information from a diagram using our trig ratios. So for this question, we're given less information within the actual diagram. So we've got to make sure we're reading the question properly. Anytime some bit of information does come up in the question, please write it on the diagram straight away because it'll just help you clear things out in your mind. So for this one, group A has walked seven kilometers at 35 degrees. So I'm going to throw that 35 degrees in immediately. Group B has gone nine Ks at 100 degrees. So I'm going to put that one in in as well. What we've got to try and do here is find length AB, which is exactly the same process that we did before. We are going to have to find that origin angle first in order to start using all these other side lengths that we've been given. So because 35 degrees up and 100 degrees is over there, we just have to find the difference between those two numbers. Difference means minus. So we go 100 minus 35 is equal to 65 degrees. And I'm going to put that in straight away. So now I've got that angle, I can actually find the length AB. And again, I'm going to use the cosine rule. So I've got x squared is equal to seven squared plus nine squared, or the two side lengths, minus two AB cos C, which is two times seven times nine, multiplied by cos 65. Again, you've got to make sure that your answer fits in and you've got to root your answer. So as long as you do that, you're going to be correct. Our final answer for this one is going to be 8.76 kilometers. And again, I would recommend putting that into your diagram just to know that if another question pops up, we know where our information is. So this next question is a little bit more difficult. We've got to find the angle of B from A, right? So the origin no longer defines the degrees that our things are on. So I'm gonna zoom into this picture, right? Just to make sure that we can see what's going on but it's really important, the first thing you have to do is to make a new set of axes across the point that we're starting at. So now A is the important point. I'm gonna put a north axis through and an east-west axis through, and that'll just tell me, hey, I know my answer is probably gonna be southeast or between 90 and 180. So if you don't get a number like that, we know we've done something wrong. So now I've got those axes in, I can find that the angle that I'm looking for is that big angle on the outside. The best way to find this is going dead south and then moving back that distance. So that little red bit that I've just put in is the exact angle that we need to find in order to work out what direction we're going. The tough part about this is that that's actually part of a bigger angle. So our goal for this one is to find out that whole angle and then minus off the bit that we know. So because the origin and point A both have north-south facing lines that we know are perpendicular to each other, we can actually find out a little bit of information just using alternate angles. This is something we haven't seen since like year seven or eight. So knowing this can be a little bit of a struggle for students to access these marks. But what is important is that that little bit 35 degrees that's shot. So now I've got that little 35 degrees. If I can find out that whole angle at point A, I can just minus off the 35 to be left with that really important bit that we talked about before. So again, I could use the cosine rule or sine rule. I've got enough information either way. This time I'm gonna use the cosine rule to find the angle, just to show you it's possible. So all I've got to do is cosine of the unknown theta is equal to seven squared plus 8.76 squared, or the two included angles, minus the opposite side, which is nine squared, all over two AB, which is two times seven, times 8.76. So now all I've got to do is make sure I'm getting theta by itself. So you've just got to do cos minus one of that answer. You can do that whole thing in one step straight away and you'll get the same answer. So if I throw that into my calculator, I get the answer of 68.61 degrees and we're just going to use 69 degrees rounded to the nearest degree, which is a nice thing to do. So now because I know that whole angle is 69 degrees and that little bit there is made up of 35 degrees What's left over is obviously 69 minus 35, which is equal to 34 degrees. So because south is 180, and I've just gone 34 degrees in that direction, in the southeast direction, I just have to minus 34 from 180, which gives me the answer of 146 degrees. And that is actually my final answer. So what this is saying is that point B from point A is 8.76 kilometers away at a angle of 146 degrees, or that is my direction. So I do know that there's a lot of information in this lesson and some of the stuff can be really tricky. 
But what's really important is that we know if we apply some of our trig principles to these questions and go through it in a really kind of scaffolded way, we're going to pick up heaps of marks in an HSC. So even if you didn't know that alternate angle thing, or sometimes you get stuck on something, as long as you're filling in the information that's provided, so the side lengths, the unknown angles and things like that, I guarantee you're going to get four out of five, five out of six for these questions. I do hope you found this lesson helpful and I'll see you guys later.